Hi everybody. Hello, I'm Ryan. I'm Bethany. And we are Ryan and Bethany Board Game Reviews. And today we're going to be talking about Deep Dive. This is designed by Molly Johnson, Robert Melvin, and Sean Stankwich. It's the team that brought you Point Salad, by the way. And it is published by AEG. In this game, you are going uh, through the life of these penguins. Uh, you and your team of penguins are going to be diving as deep as you can, trying to get as much food as possible. But guess what? All food is not necessarily what you want. You want a variety. You want a variety. balanced diet, right? You want all the colors that the game has. <laughs> you don't want just all the green foods. You want some green, some pink, some yellow, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> you also, the further down you go, uh, the better food is down there. But that's also where the more predators live as well, so you gotta be careful. That's where you become food. <laughs> Let me give you a quick overview of how to play. All right, here's our setup for Deep Dive. We have all these different tiles kind of getting increasingly darker as you kind of go deeper and deeper down into the ocean. Every player is also gonna start with three of our little penguin meeples. What's gonna happen is we're gonna start the shallowest part of the water and we're gonna to to do a push your luck kind of tile reveal. What we're trying to do is we're trying to get sets of these different colored fish. There's three colors, kind of a green, yellow, and a pink. And as you collect those fish, you're only gonna get half of the value of points unless you have a full set of each. So let me show you what that might look like. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start at the shallowest part here and we're gonna choose a tile, we're gonna flip it over. Or we've got a rock. That's a great tile that's gonna allow us to kind of sink down later on if we want to, or we can choose to leave that there and go to the next section. Let's go ahead and go to the next section. Oh, uh, you know what? We revealed a predator. Predators are more and more prevalent the deeper down you go, but they are in all the different stages. What's gonna happen is uh, we're gonna get captured by that predator. We're gonna leave our meeple on that spot, and then the next turn we're gonna have to start using new meeple and start all over again. The only good news though is uh, when we get to the second tier here, because we have a meeple being distracted by a predator, we can skip over that and get to the third tier if we want to. All right, so let's go to another tile here. Once again, once we get to this, we can choose to take any face-up tile that was left before. So again, we can choose to take that stone, which is a safe bet, or we can risk it and we can keep on going. All right, so now we've got a fish. Uh, let's go ahead and take this one. All right, so we're gonna take it and set it in front of us, face up, and, uh, and our penguin comes back as well. On our next turn, as always, we start at the top here, but maybe this time we choose to take the stone. What you can do with the stone is you can choose to use it to dive to any depth. Let's go ahead and spend that. It's gonna make us heavy, so we can go all the way down to the bottom and flip over one of these tiles. These are much more lucrative. We've got another green here. This is a 10 point as opposed to our two point that we found over here in the shallows. Let's go ahead and take that and put that into our rows here. Again, we're trying to collect sets. So when you have something like this, you have a green, a yellow, and a pink. That whole row there is going to score its full points. We've got a six, six, and a two for a total of 14 points. Then over here, we have a yellow that's worth 10 points, but because it's not part of a full complete set, it's only gonna be worth half points. In this case, it's worth five points. That's worth a lot of points if we can get to its full value. So at this point in the game, we might be trying to specifically hunt for some pinks and greens so we can get that set built up completely and get more points. Last kind of tile I want to talk about is the bubble tile. If you flip over a bubble tile, basically that means you can kind of keep on going. You can skip over to the next thing without having any penalties. If you ever have a situation where all three of your penguins are captured by the predators, what you can do is you can pick them all up, restart over again, and on the way back up, you can take one face-up fish from one of the places where you have a penguin. And that's really all there is to the game. You're trying to get as many sets of those fish as possible. The more colors you have, the better it's going to be, the more points you're going to get. But then also, the further down you go, the higher point values you're going to find. But there's also going to be more predators and challenges down there as well. The end of the game is going to be triggered once any one of those five stages has been completely flipped over and there's no more face down tiles there. At that point, we're going to finish the round so everyone has an equal number of turns, and then we're all going to take one more last turn called the last dive. It's going to be our last chance to maybe kind of finish out a set or get some additional points. After every player has taken their last dive, you're going to add up all the points. Remember, full sets get full points, incomplete sets get half points. At the end of all that, whoever has the most points wins the game. One of the things that's very interesting about this is that the set collection of the game actually encourages you to dive deeper. So if you really need like a pink one or you're not going to score all of that, you might go deeper because you keep flipping over stuff that isn't that, but you want to score all of that. So I like how that set collection aspect of it actually encourages you as a gamer to keep trying and to keep going deeper. So I really like that. And also, if you do get caught by a predator and the kind of the predators kind of ramp up, uh, yeah. In, in numerically, is the more you go down, statistically, uh, the further down you go. Um, 
but it's not always bad if you do get caught by a predator. Yeah. You getting caught by a predator, having one of your penguins caught, allows that predator to be distracted. Yeah. So that way, <laughs> other predators there. of yours, or other penguins of yours, can go further down. So you have the situation where um, you're able to kind of leapfrog over some of the, maybe the top tier stuff so you can get further down, where it is more dangerous, of course, but it's also where the higher point stuff is. Yeah. So it's not always all bad to get caught by a predator. And then even with all three of yours to get caught, all of your penguins, you get them right back. Uh, so it's not like you know, you're out of the game or something. There's not like some player elimination. You, yeah. just, you just get them back and just keep on going. Yeah. Um, I think... <laughs> So it's easy to set up, right? And especially after you've stayed, uh, set it up the one time with all the bags, you just put all, all the one level and one bag, you dump it out and you flip it over and the game's ready to go. But I do want to say that it takes up a lot more table space than you would think it would because there's these five different layers that you're going through and it's not like there's a lot of tiles so they're spread out. I just didn't realize it was going to take up so much table space, but it totally did. Not saying that's a bad thing, just thought you'd want to know. Uh... I like how at the end of the game, there's this kind of this last call. They call it last dive. Yeah. Uh, which is really important because I think a lot of times you're in the middle of a set collection or there, you know, you can look around and you're like, I'm probably behind in points or, or maybe you feel really safe. I think I'm ahead in points a little bit. What you can do is you can use that information and use that last dive to get what you need. Maybe, you know what, you think you're ahead, just take one little piece and put it in and you're done. Or maybe you're like thinking, I really need a pink one. If I don't get a pink one, I don't score this set at full maximum points. I need a pink one. You're able to dig as you know, deep as far as you can, risking it all on this last di last yeah. dive. So I like how it gives you one last chance to kind of seal the deal, get as many points as you can. I really liked this game. Like, I liked it a lot. I remember seeing it and hearing about it and being like, I'm going to like this game. And then we were playing it, and I'm like, I like this game. It is so much fun. This game actually reminded me a lot of another game that I really like, um, Deep Sea Adventure. Except, because it's the same thing, you're trying to go down to get treasure and go back up. There's a huge push your leg aspect to that. The thing that I liked about this that's a little bit different than that is that you have a bit more control over the push your luck aspect to it. And you're more likely to get things since the scoring is through sets, not just pure points of what you can get. So I like the fact that it's still push your luck, but you still have a lot more control over what happens. You know, you can take that stone, you can skip some things, you can try to peer around. And, and I really, really liked that. This was a super fun game for me. Okay, so it, I'm not a Push Your Luck fan. No. I don't like Push Your Luck games. You're so. very open and honest about that. That's right. I like me being in control of my destiny, not <laughs> luck. Uh, that being said, um, this it was very quick, right? It didn't overstay yeah. its welcome, so I didn't feel like I was just sitting in a style of game I just hated for like an hour or two hours or whatever it was. <laughs> uh, and that is also, as a risk-averse person, um, you could still have fun playing this game. Yeah. Just keep close to the shallows, you know, and thematically that works as well. Um, and you just can get a ton and ton of volume of food without getting a ton of the quality of food. Yeah. And the scores are still going to be comparable. Um, the more risks you take and the payoff, you're going to do better. You're right. That just makes sense. It's what the game wants you to do. Yeah. But it's still fun. You can still have fun. You can even score decently by being kind of playing it a little bit more safe. And that makes me as a player enjoy that there's those options for me first of all and yeah. second of all knowing that I have a little bit more control and I don't have to just keep on taking these big risks just to hopefully pay off and uh, they never do because I just it's the way it works for me yeah and just keep on doing that over and over and over again so essentially both of our play styles can work with this game yes <laughs> <laughs> I can do crazy wild stuff and potentially win or you can play it safe and potentially win it works for both of us yes <laughs> everybody thank you so much for watching it don't forget to follow us and all the these places so you can see all the weird things that we're doing and fun and cool things that we're doing and don't forget to subscribe so you can see our videos as they come out you guys thanks for watching we will see you next time bye, bye. You guys, thanks so much for watching. Uh, this game was provided to us by a publisher for in exchange for a fair and honest review. And if you want to see more stuff, check out over here to see something we think you might like. And over here, we think uh, that YouTube has picked out a great video for you. You're going to love. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next time.